Hey, it's your old pal Lucid Stew again, and welcome to another Dream Streams Breakdown. Media Molecule is back at streaming after a long hiatus, and we're going to take a look at their latest from the Global Game Jam, which ran from the 26th to the 28th. We'll take a look at several nascent games created with Dreams in that 48-hour period. We didn't see any creation during the stream, but we'll still see the logic working at runtime and draw some conclusions. The first is Strange Radio Signals. If you look at my last video or have some Little Big Planet experience, you probably know that the output of these knobs and sliders is hooking up to a signal gadget via several wires. That allows the player to manipulate variables within the signal gadget. For those that don't know, wires are used to connect two or more logical elements, and a signal gadget produces trigonometric functions for usage in various ways. Output from this signal gadget is then running to the display mechanic. Just guessing, but it looks like an emitter is adjusting position to the output of the signal gadget, and then emitting either green or red dots. The next game is Scrobbled. From a logical standpoint, this is reminiscent of what I'd call basic Little Big Planet logic. It looks like it uses a grab sensor to pick up the letter tabs. Tags on the tabs probably match up to with tag sensors on the boats. If you're not familiar with tags, they basically mark an object as a certain type. This allows you to then logically sort by, include by, or exclude by type. It looks like emitters are creating both the letter tabs and the boats. We can see a minor bug with the usage of the grab sensor where it is possible to pick up more than one tab at once. A little extra logic would fix this. Another minor problem is that the tag sensors in the boats are firing even if the letter tabs aren't upright. Similarly, also a pretty easy fix. Last observation, the boats are keeping track of when they become full and then changing speed. This can be accomplished a few different ways, but probably involves a number variable waiting to hit the correct amount before outputting the newer, faster movement value. Fly My Pigeon Fly gives us a good look at dynamic world creation. As the bird flies, the world is created in front of it by emitting prefab set pieces. We can't see behind the camera to check if those pieces are also being destroyed after a period of time, but you could use a mechanic like that to create a completely dynamic world. This would keep resources low at runtime, allowing for good performance, but a potentially limitless world size. Handyland has some interesting features. The first is an in-world intro splash UI that fades in opacity after X is pressed. The game world is a large, constantly rotating drum. It looks like physics are adjusted in some way, as these objects should probably be sliding off the drum as they reach the horizon. We can see collision detection in effect with the high-fiving. If the player doesn't high-five an NPC, the NPC changes to an angry state after a certain distance. Presumably, we're dealing with some logic that triggers either from player position or perhaps with the trigger zone. Not so much logic, but Handyland also shows off some post-processing filters you can apply to give your world a certain visual look without all the work. With Gene Journey, we can see more of what appears to be tag and tag sensor logic. Each object firing from the left, presumably by emitter, is looking for its matching object from above. You can see a bit of a bug in this logic. It looks like when there's a match, a new object is created at the position of the match point and then attached to the object coming from the left. The two then continue off to the right together. However, if you notice, the original object from above isn't being destroyed right away, so you end up with duplicates for a moment. The other thing this world features is branching outcomes based on what happens in the current world. This could lead to all sorts of storytelling and world map mechanics. Lastly, we have the Nebula, which is four-player local. Player ships try to acquire rogue ships within their proximity. So we're looking at some logic involving probably tags and trigger zones to determine what can be acquired and whether or not it's in range. When the rogue ships are acquired by the player ships, they rotate toward the player's forward vector. After that, player control input is duplicated onto the captured rogue ship. So the control logic from the player ship is being cloned somehow. I'm not re real familiar with it, but it looks like this could be similar to broadcast microchips in Little Big Planet 3. And lastly, we have some sort of collision detection between the projectiles and the captured ships. It also takes more than one shot to destroy a captured ship, so there is some logic to track damage or health and then destroy when that health variable 
reaches a certain point. So that's all for Global Game Jam. It's nice to see some more logic at work from the outside, and of course I'm glad Media Molecule is streaming Dreams again. However, what I'd like, and I think probably some of you would like as well, is to start seeing a little bit more technical, logical discussion from Media Molecule. We get some occasionally from Alex Evans on Twitter. If you haven't followed him already, you should do so, because so far that's where the most in-depth discussion has occurred. You can also follow me. I don't have a lot going on my on my Twitter account lately, but I'm usually involved in just about any Dreams Logic discussion on Twitter, and you can also get updates on this series as well as listen to me complain about my calculus homework. Anyway, that's all for this time. Check back for more Dream Streams breakdowns.